Hey everyone, welcome to worship. We are so glad that you are joining us today. We're excited about spending some time with you today. In fact, if you're a guest with us, or maybe you're with us again for the first time in a long time, we would love to know that you're connecting with us. Go to our website, fcbc.life, click on that Let's Connect card, and let us know that you're here. And if we can pray for you or answer your questions or help you take your next step in your journey with Christ, we would love to do that. We're going to sing some songs today. We want you to join in. And then I'm going to come back and share a message about the importance of saving for emergencies. And one of the things I'm going to do is provide a link that you can click on that will take you to a great article about the importance of budgeting and how easy it is to budget. It's a link by Dave Ramsey. You'll not want to miss that. But we're going to talk more about that in the message. Love you. We'll see you as we continue to worship. We're so glad you've joined us for church today, and we'd love for you to sing along with us. I was dead in sin, but I 
It's all for his glory. Everything that we are is for his glory. He created us with just a breath. He created the entire universe, and he is a God who is worth praising, a God who is worth lifting up, a God who is worth magnifying in the good times and in the bad times. Regardless of what's going on in our, on in our lives, we can praise him in the middle of the storm. We can praise him in the middle of the good times because our God never changes. And we'd love for you to sing this song along with us. It reminds us that regardless of our circumstances, we can still praise our God. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me.
just pray that you will help us to praise you through every storm that comes in our life. Let us see how faithful you have always been in our lives and remind us how faithful you will continue to be. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. In this series, we're calling The New Normal. We're looking at some of the things that we've had to learn to do and to adjust and recognizing some of those are good things. And there are new skills, there are new habits, or there are new attitudes that we ought to continue to cultivate in the future. In fact, one of those things that should become the new normal for us is seeing and acting on the importance of saving for emergencies. You know, none of us would have predicted on New Year's Eve this year that the world would be plunged into a, a worldwide pandemic and that economies would shut down almost overnight, that church services would be closed and all kinds of events would be canceled, and that so many people would lose their jobs. And as a result of that, if, if your family is like my family, one of the first things you started thinking about was your personal finances. Uh, this was all before we knew that maybe there would be government assistance to help during the time of the crisis. So you're thinking, how are we going to make ends meet? What are we going to have to cut? Are we going to have to sell some things? Are we going to have to file for bankruptcy? I don't know what kind of questions were going through your mind, but many people realized, wow, I wasn't prepared for this. And then you start looking back on how maybe you've handled your finances in the previous year, and you think, if I had known this was coming, I would have handled my money a little differently last year. I certainly wouldn't have racked up so much on the credit card. I wouldn't have eaten out as much. I would have saved more. I wouldn't have bought that new car that I really couldn't afford. But hindsight is twenty twenty, And the new normal ought to be that we realize from this day forward the importance of saving for an emergency, having an emergency fund, having a rainy day fund. In fact, it's actually one of the principles that we learn in Scripture that a wise person saves money. Now, that's not just my opinion of what the Bible says. The Bible is very explicit. Proverbs chapter 21, verse 20, for example, in the house of the wise are stores or reserves of choice food and oil, but a foolish man devours all he has. So one of the Proverbs in the Old Testament from one of the wisest people that ever lived says, if you go to a wise person's home, you will discover that they don't consume everything that they have, all the crops that they grow. They don't spend all the money that they make. They actually lay some aside for reserve. They put some aside in savings. That's what a wise person does. But a foolish man devours all he has. We, we, we live and we don't save. We spend. In fact, not only do we spend all that comes in, with easy credit, we can spend more than what we actually have. And that's a foolish way to live because we're setting ourselves up for danger when trials come our way. And listen, we know that this global pandemic is, is something that is rare. It's not unexpected. It's not unprecedented, but it is rare. But here's something that we all instinctively know. It is not a matter of if, but when an emergency comes. Maybe it's not a global pandemic. Maybe for you, the emergency is the transmission in your car goes out and the auto shop tells you it's going to be $3,500 to replace it and it's your only mode of transportation, but you don't have any money in savings. Or maybe the hurricane comes through and you need a new roof. Now you've got a deductible you've got to pay of thousands of dollars in order to get a new roof. In fact, most Americans struggle when medical emergencies come. And listen, just having recently gone through some of this, I recognize now more than ever how expensive it is when you get sick. And now your family not only has a medical crisis, now you have a financial crisis. It's not a matter of if. But when an emergency comes, according to the Wall Street Journal, 70% of American families are living paycheck to paycheck. 
In fact, a recent Gallup poll found that 68% of Americans, this was before the pandemic, 68% of Americans would be unable to cover a $5,000 emergency without having to borrow the money. Now think about that. Think about, it doesn't take much to get into that kind of an emergency where you need $5,000. And yet most Americans could not meet that emergency without borrowing the money and getting further in debt. We're living on a razor's edge. We're living paycheck to paycheck. And we are putting ourselves and our family in financial danger when we do that. And I, for one, I can promise you in my life, I have been foolish at times with how I've handled money. I didn't make the wise choice. I was more concerned about what I wanted and what I liked and, hey, I can make the payments rather than thinking about the future and being ready for the time an emergency comes. It was Dave Ramsey who said, Dave Ramsey, that great financial guru, he, he teaches Financial Peace University that we often do uh, here in our church. But he's the one who said, I've done stupid and it always cost me money. I've done stupid with zeros on the end of it. And I think many of us could relate to that, that we haven't always made the, the wise financial choice. So it's not a matter of if, but when an emergency comes. And we see this illustrated in this great story we're going to read today from the Old Testament. It's in Genesis chapter 41, beginning with verse 15. It's the story about a man named Joseph. When Joseph was young as a teenager, his brothers hated him so much they sold him into slavery. Joseph eventually ends up in Egypt as a slave. There he is, a Hebrew boy, a Jewish boy, but now he is a slave in Egypt. And for many of those years, he's in prison. And that's where we find him in our story today, that he's in prison when Pharaoh has a troubling dream and he doesn't know how to make sense of his dream. None of his magicians or astrologers or wise people know how to interpret the dream, but his cupbearer says, I know someone who can interpret your dream. And they call for Joseph to be released from prison. They shave him, they clean him up, they make him look more like an Egyptian than a Hebrew, and they bring him in before Pharaoh to interpret the dream. You say, well, what does this have to do with saving for an emergency? I think you'll find out in just a moment. Look at Genesis chapter 41, verse 15. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, I've had a dream. And there is no one who can interpret it. I have heard it said of you that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. Joseph answered Pharaoh, it's not me. God will give Pharaoh a favorable answer. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, behold, in my dream, I was standing on the banks of the Nile. Seven cows, plump and attractive, came up out of the Nile and fed in the reed grass. Seven other cows came up after them, poor and very ugly and thin, such as I've never seen in all the land of Egypt. And the thin, ugly cows ate up the seven plump cows. I don't know about you, but I've had dreams like that. You go, what in the world is going on here? And verse 21, but when they had eaten them, no one would have known that they had eaten them, for they were still as ugly as as at the beginning. Then I awoke, Pharaoh says. He says, what a dream that you've got these seven beautiful, healthy-looking cows eating reed on the bank of the Nile River, and then suddenly these seven ugly, detestable, grotesque cows come up and eat the healthy ones. But after they ate them, this picture of cannibalism, Pharaoh says you would have never have known it because they were still as thin and ugly as before. And Pharaoh says, I woke up, I, I was startled. I didn't know what to make of this dream. But when he went back to sleep, he had another dream. It was really all a part of one dream. In verse 22, I also saw in my dream seven ears growing on one stalk, full and good. He's now dreaming of these seven ears of grain. And he says, I saw them growing on one stalk. It was healthy, full, good, everything looked great. Verse 23, then I saw seven ears withered, thin, and blighted by the east wind sprouted after them. 
and the thin ears swallowed up the seven good ears. And I told it to the magicians, but there was no one who could explain it to me. Then Joseph said to Pharaoh, The dreams of Pharaoh are one. God has revealed to Pharaoh what he is about to do. The seven cows are seven years. The seven good cows are seven years. And the seven good ears are seven years. The dreams are one. The seven lean and ugly cows that came up after them are seven years. And the seven empty ears blighted by the east wind are also seven years of, here's the word, famine. Verse 28. It is as I told Pharaoh. God has shown to Pharaoh what he is about to do. There will come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. But after them, there will arise seven years of famine and all the plenty will be forgotten in the land of Egypt. The famine will consume the land and the plenty will be unknown in the land by reason of the famine that will follow for it will be very severe. Joseph says, no one will remember the good days, those wonderful days of feasting. When the famine comes, it will be so bad. People will be consumed with misery. Verse 32, and the doubling of Pharaoh's dream means that the thing is fixed by God and God will shortly bring it about. Listen, I don't want to be a prophet of doom or gloom for me or for you. But I can tell you based on what we read in Scripture and the history that we read in our history books and our own personal history that days of danger will come. Feast lead to famine. Good times often give way to bad times. Health often gives way to sickness. It's not a matter of if but when difficult days come. Maybe right now you're living in the midst of a financial crisis. You say, I know what it's like to be in a famine, a financial famine. Or maybe you're saying, I'm doing fine. I'm getting through this well. I still have a job. I've got a paycheck coming through. But I can promise you, be prepared. Because for all of us, it's not a matter of if, it is a matter of when. Money Magazine reports that 78% of us will have a major financial crisis within 10 year period of time. So you think about 10 families you know. You count 10 families you know. Within 10 years, eight of those families will be hit with a severe financial crisis. Anywhere between $6,000 or $10,000 or more. Are you prepared for when the crisis comes? When you lose your job? When your health gives you trouble and your medical bills rack up? Which is one of the number one Uh, reasons people in America file for bankruptcy, personal bankruptcy, medical expenses. That's why we need to do something about health care. Are you ready for that day whenever it comes? Now, there's a second truth that we can learn from this story. Not only it's not a matter of if, but when an emergency comes. The second truth is saving for an emergency requires a plan of action. Joseph doesn't just simply interpret Pharaoh's dream He actually gives Pharaoh a plan of action to prepare for when that emergency finally arrives. Go back to Genesis 41, pick up in verse 33. Joseph continues, Now therefore, let Pharaoh select a discerning and wise man, here again, wise, wisdom, a wise man, and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh proceed to appoint overseers over the land and take one-fifth, In other words, take 20% of the produce of the land of Egypt during the seven plentiful years. He says, you need to put somebody in charge of this plan. They need to start saving 20% of everything the land produces during these seven good years so that we can save up an emergency supply for the seven years of famine. Verse 35, let them gather all the food of these good years that are coming and store up grain under the authority of Pharaoh for food in the cities and let them keep it. The food shall be a reserve. It's not something we're going to spend. It's not something we're going to use. Not something we're going to eat. This is going to be a reserve for the land against the seven years of famine that are to occur in the land of Egypt so that the land may not perish through the famine. He says, if we're going to make it through those seven years of famine, we've got to prepare now. 
Verse 37, this proposal pleased Pharaoh and all his servants. So now all that's left is to find a wise man that Pharaoh can put over this project. Verse 38, and Pharaoh said to his servants, can we find a man like this in whom is the spirit of God? Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has shown you all of this, there is none so discerning and wise as you are. You shall be over my house and all my people shall order themselves as you command. Only as regards the throne will I be greater than you. He says, Joseph, you're the wise one I'm looking for. You're going to be second in command. Can you imagine that? Joseph, a Hebrew faithful to God, no matter what, has been taken from the prison to the palace in just a matter of a few hours, and now he is second in command in all of Egypt. And Joseph had a plan of action. If we know a crisis is coming, what do we do? We save, save, save. We get ready to live on a budget. And part of our budget is we're going to make sure a set amount is put aside for an emergency to come. In this plan, it was 20%. Dave Ramsey says, for all of us, we ought to be setting aside 10% for God, 10% in savings for an emergency fund. Listen, you need a plan. I need a plan. We need to be living on a budget, and that budget needs to include saving for emergencies. Saving has to be done intentionally because it'll never happen accidentally. You've got to have a budget. You've got to have a plan. You put it on paper. You agree on it. And you make the wise choices. No, we're not going to be spending that money. We'd love to go to the movies when you could go to the movies. Remember those days? We'd love to go out to eat. We'd love to do all these fun vacations. But no, that money we have agreed we need to put aside for when the crisis comes so that we can be prepared. Verse 41, And Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I've set you over all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring from his hand and put it on Joseph's hand. That meant he was giving him authority to act on behalf of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh clothed him in garments of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him ride in his second chariot. And they called out before him, Bow the knee. Thus he set him over all the land of Egypt. Now there's a third lesson we can learn. Not only, it's not a matter of if, but when an emergency comes. And saving for an emergency requires a plan of action. But thirdly, you do the work of making a plan, then you work the plan. Too many times we come up with a plan, but we never follow through with action. Genesis 41 verse 48 it says, and he gathered up all the food of these seven years which occurred in the land of Egypt and put the food in the cities. He put in every city the food from the fields around it. And Joseph stored up grain in great abundance like the sand of the sea until he ceased to measure it for it could not be measured. They saved so much, Joseph finally gave up trying to keep track of it. It was too much to measure how much grain do you have in storage? I don't know. I've lost track. Now, this didn't happen overnight. It took seven years to get to the point where Joseph said, I don't know how much we have. We have so much now ready for the time of famine. It didn't happen overnight. And it's not going to happen overnight for you or for me. But we need to start where we are today. And we need to take steps to get where we need to be. And we need to give it time. And the fourth and final thought today from this lesson is savings protects your family and prepares you for the future. And it protects not only your family, but those around you so that you can be a blessing to others in their time of need. Genesis 41 verse 55 says, When all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried to Pharaoh for bread. Pharaoh said to all the Egyptians, Go to Joseph. What he says to you, do. And Joseph was able to save the people of Egypt from dying of starvation because he had planned for the emergency. And listen, we don't have time today to get into it, but there's a bigger story here. You remember, he was sold into slavery by his brothers, but later Joseph will look back on his life and he will say to them, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. 
God brought good out of this. Because that famine not only impacted Egypt, it also hit the Hebrew people. And Joseph's own family, the lineage of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, was in danger of dying, being decimated, and ending. Think about that. The Messiah could have never come had the family of Joseph died in that famine. But God had positioned Joseph in a place to not only protect himself and the Egyptian people, but also to protect the Hebrew people, including the very family through which our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, would come. Because Joseph was able and willing to save, he was able to protect his family and be a blessing to the world. You just won't ever go wrong in wanting to be a blessing to others and being able to save so that you can be that blessing you want to be. So what have we learned? Well, we've learned trouble's coming. We may get through this pandemic quicker than, than not, but another crisis will come. Today is the time to prepare for that crisis. We need to learn to not live beyond our means, but to live within our means, including setting aside money for saving so that we can have an emergency fund. And we need a plan of action that we're going to then act on and we need to give it time. It's not going to happen overnight, and it's not going to be easy, and it's not going to be fun at times. It's not going to be glamorous at times, but the payoff is going to be awesome whenever the crisis comes, and we're able to live through it and survive it, and not only survive, but be a blessing to other people as a result of how we prepared. And of course, all of this will be because God's good hand has been upon us and helped us. Now, here's your homework. I want you to click on that link below that will take you to the website of Dave Ramsey. And there's an article, just take five minutes to read that article about the ABCs of budgeting. Maybe you say, I don't know where to start. I don't, budget sounds boring. It sounds hard. I don't know what to do. We've tried budgets in the past. They don't work. Just take my word for it. Go to the website, take a look at it, and start developing your budget. And then... Hopefully in the fall, we're going to be able to offer Dave Ramsey's classes called Financial Peace University. I would encourage you, sign up for that and let us walk together as we learn to save for emergencies. Because remember, wise people save for emergencies. Let's pray together. God, thank you so much for our time today. We've enjoyed the time of worship. We thank you for how you speak to us in such practical ways in our lives. And we want to hear you, and we want to obey you. And God, we hear you today that it's wise to save for an emergency because emergencies will come. And it's foolish to not save, to not prepare, to not think about the future. We don't want to be foolish. God, forgive us of the past. We thank you that you don't condemn us. But we also pray that you would help us to make better decisions today. And Father, we'll praise you for the difference you make in our lives. And we do thank you that you did eventually send your son Jesus into the world to die for us on the cross. It's in his name, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us today. I want to thank you again for how so many of you are being faithful in your giving to our church during this time. And we thank you. In fact, if you'd like to give, click on that link. It'll take you to our safe and secure online giving portal. Your giving makes all of our ministries to bless our community possible. We can't thank you enough for that. So thank you. And we look forward to seeing you next week as we talk about the importance of raising our children to know the Lord.